Welcome to Electron Online, and here's a problem that most of us are probably familiar with in real life. Here we're trying to remove a nail, and we're using a crowbar. And the crowbar is pivoting at this location right here. Let's call that location, location A. And the nail will require a force of 600 newtons for that nail to be removed. And we're using a crowbar that has a horizontal section here equal to 12 centimeters in length, and has this vertical section here uh, 50 centimeters in length and we're applying a force at an angle of 10 degrees relative to the horizontal we're kind of pulling down how much force is required to remove that nail so first of all we're going to calculate the moment required using a moment arm of 12 centimeters to remove a 600 newton nail and we're assuming that the force will be perpendicular to the direction the of the position vector which is the moment arm right here so let's call the first position or let's call it r sub 2 right here let's call this r sub 2 and so therefore we know that the moment about point a and we're looking for the magnitude of that moment is equal to the position vector r r sub 2 multiplied times the force f sub 2 times the sine of the angle between the two now, it turns out, since the force is in this direction, the position vector is this direction, the angle between the two is a 90 degree angle, so we can say that this is equal to R2 times F2 times the sine of 90 degrees, and of course the sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1, and so therefore we can say that this is equal to R times F, and the position vector is 12 centimeters, which is 0.12 meters, and the force is equal to 600 newtons, 600 newtons. So that requires a moment of, looks like, 72 newton meters. All right, so how much force will be required in this particular location? Uh, when you pull at, that, at the very end of the crowbar in that direction, how much force will be required to remove that nail? So the force required, or at least the moment required, is as follows, right? The moment... Uh, at pivoting at A, the magnitude of that will be equal to 72 newton meters. So it will be the same amount required on the other side, but of course the moment arm is bigger, so less force will be required. The question is how much force? So we, we can say in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to find the perpendicular distance from the point of, flow, from the point of rotation, from the pivot point, to the line of action of the force. So there's the line of action of the force, like this. We're finding the closest distance d right here. So we can say that the magnitude of the moment, the magnitude of the moment, can be expressed as the force applied times d. And we'll do it another way so you can see in just a moment how that's done. So in this case we're looking for force. So we can say that the force is equal to the moment arm, or I should say is equal to the moment, divided by the shortest distance from the point of rotation or from the pivot point to the line of action of the force. So it now comes down to finding that distance d. So we have a triangle right here, and we're trying to find the angles. So let's see here. If this angle is 75 degrees, then that means that this angle here must be 75 degrees as well with respect to the horizontal. But we're trying to find the angle with respect to this line right here, so that means that this angle here is 75 degrees minus 10 degrees, or 65 degrees. And since we're looking for D, and we have the hypotenuse, which is 50 centimeters, we can say, therefore, that D will be equal to the hypotenuse, which is 50 centimeters, times the sine of 65 degrees, because D is opposite to this angle, so times the sine of 65 degrees, and that then goes in here. So we can say that this is equal to 72 newton meters divided by D, which is 0 0.5 meters times the sine of 65 degrees. So this is equal to 72 divided by 0 0.5 divided by 65, take the sine, equals and it would be 159 newtons of force required, which is reasonable, and that's, of course, why we use crowbars. 
So if you apply a force of 159 newtons, you will then remove the nail here, which requires a force of 600 newtons. Of course, you use a much bigger moment arm here, so it makes it a lot easier to actually remove that nail. So a second method in which we can use the same idea, but instead of using the distance d, we're going to use the following. We can say that the moment about point A and we want to find the magnitude of that is equal to the moment arm R. We're going to use R sub 1. So let's build a new moment arm. I need a different color here. Let me use uh, this color. Let's see if that works. Whoa! There we go. Let me use this pen right here. So there, be, there will be my new moment arm right here. Let's call it R sub 1. So to find that, we find the magnitude of R sub 1 times the magnitude of the force times the sine of the angle between them, and I'll call it phi, the sine of phi, and so the, that will be the angle between those two. So let me go ahead and show me what the angle then should look like. So I'm looking for this angle right here. So if we continue the moment arm this way, and we have the line of force right here, I want to find this angle right here, phi. So the question is, what is that angle equal to? Well, we'll find in just a moment. First of all, we're looking for the force, so we can say that the force is equal to the moment, and we want to find the magnitude of the moment, divided by R1 times the sine of phi. So here that would be the moment, which is, uh, where did we, right here, 72 Newton meters, divided by R, and R of course is half a meter, 0 0.5 meters, times the sine of phi. Now we need to find phi. What is phi equal to? Well, again, there's this angle right here, and if you look at the opposite angle, that would be the angle between this line right here and the angle between this line, which is 65 degrees. So we can say times the sine of 65 degrees. And of course, it's no wonder that the equation looks exactly the same as the one over here, because of course we need the same answer. And Again, it all comes down to what principle you want to use. Do you want to use the moment, the magnitude of the moment is equal to the force times the distance between the pivot point and the line of action of the force so that that distance comes upon the line of action of force perpendicular to that line, or do you want to use the principle where we say it's the distance of the moment arm times the magnitude of the force times the sine of the angle between those two, and in the end, no matter how you work at the problem, you should get the exact same result. And here as well, you get 159 Newton meters, which is the magnitude of the force. So either way, you'll get the exact same result. And that's how we use those two principles to find the moment, to find the force, or to find anything like that of this type of problem. So we'll do some more examples to get the feel of how to actually apply these techniques. That's how it's done.